Welcome to my Tech Talk with the technical information scientists at the Jackson Laboratory. My name is Dolores, and my job as a technical information scientist is to serve the research community by answering all mouse-related research questions. Yeah, and I'm Dr. Ito. My Tech Talk is a way for us to connect with the research community and answer some of the most related questions live. So hopefully you are ready with your questions because it is time for Mouse Tech Talk. Make sure to enter your questions on uh, the comment section so we can see them and we can hopefully ask, answer some of those. So today let's talk common health conditions of black six mice. Yeah, as we all know that C57 black 6 is a very common inbred strain, and many transgenes and mutations are generated or backcrossed to this black 6 background. So today we are going to share some most common health issues that black 6 and black 6 derived strains may develop and tips on how to manage that. We have prepared a few discussion topics. For you uh, watching live, you can use, as I said, the comment section of the video to tell us uh, where you live, where you're watching from, and any related questions that you may have. We'll try to answer those today. I'm very happy to have Yi Tong today with us, since she also worked side by side with the veterinary staff at JAX, and she has seen firsthand many of the conditions that we're gonna discuss today. Yeah, thank you, Dolores. Um, so I've been working with vet staff and I go to the mouse room a couple of times a week to assess um, animals that are already on observation or wherever there are new cases comes up. Um, and today we are going to talk about the top three common health issues that black six may develop. Um, the first one I think would be alopecia, um, which could progress to dermatitis. So alopecia is just hair loss. So you will see like patches of hair loss or lack of whisker, and it can happen anywhere like around the shoulder area or all over the back. And it's, it is a very common phenomenon in black six and black six derived strain. And it's especially common among co-host post wing females. And this condition is caused by over grooming or barbering by animal cage mates or even themselves. Um, but please know that the skin is still intact and generally healthy. That's right. So can you tell us how uh, we manage alopecia? Yeah, um, I think f the first thing um, that you should do is to consult with your facility vet um, as they know the facility very well and they are just right there and then can go to the mouse room to assess those mice um, and give suggestions and guidelines. Um, now I'm going to share with you some tips that we found pretty helpful. Um, alopecia is an abnormal behavior in mice and the cause of this behavior is generally complex. So um, generally, we would think that there are some kind of stressors in the colony. So anything that you could do to reduce stress, like reduce handling, um, reduce vibration and noise may be beneficial. Um, other than that, if the symptom is mild, you could try add some enrichment like those turtles and shake to see whether it alleviates the condition. But please know that this practice is somehow um, strain dependent and enrichment dependent. So like for some strains, it does great with one type of enrichment, but for other strains, it may worsen the condition. So you may need to assess it to find out. That's right, that's right. And um, as always, you can contact uh, the tech support team and, and we'll be happy to give you specifics on a particular strain that you're working with. The other thing to keep in mind is to reduce uh, the housing density. A lot of times that is very helpful for alopecia. For example, if you house four to five pulled wind mice in a cage, you can try to reduce that to two or three mice per cage um, and see whether that helps or not. If um, none of the above uh, helps, then uh, you may need to isolate the dominating uh, barber mouse and um, that's easy to catch. If there are several mice with hair loss and there is one of them that doesn't have hair loss, then that would be uh, the dominating barber. However, uh, keep in mind that the rest of the mice may learn to be barbers, so you may end up just um, singly housing all of the barber mice. 
Right, and I do want to let you know that alopecia is an expected phenotype in our aged black six colony. So alopecia is allotted after 25 weeks of age. So don't be surprised if you receive mice with alopecia greeting coat um, in our aged black six colony. And Dolores is going to pull up the strain data sheets of our aged black six. Yeah, let me... Um share my screen for a moment here and I will show you. So what I'm going to show here is um, the strain data sheet of our aged C57 black six mice. And if you scroll down, you will see how uh, the animal looks when he's older. And uh, there are some questions, uh, not only showing the gray hair, also on the thinning hair, but you can see here some pictures about um, how do they look after they, are, uh, they have barbered around uh, the eyes, around uh, the nose. Those are examples of um, barbered uh, mice that you can check. So, uh, Yitong, what is the difference? This is a, a question that uh, came in. What is the difference between alopecia and dermatitis? Yeah, right. And as I mentioned before, alopecia is a strain characteristic of black six and black six drive strains, and it is just hair loss. So the skin is still intact and healthy. However, in some cases, um, barbering could lead to dermatitis or ulcerative dermatitis, and that becomes a clinical issue. So in that case, you will see like inflammation, redness of the skin, and it could progress to ulcer, meaning that the dermis is damaged. Um, and Dolores, I remember that we did some study that look at the risk factors of dermatitis in our black six colonies. Could you elaborate that? That's right, that's right. So what we know is that dermatitis is most likely a multifactorial disease, and uh, it has both genetic and environmental factors, including sex, season, humidity, the cage type, the diet. There's a lot of things that um, you have to keep in mind uh, that can affect uh, this particular problem. In our C57 black six colonies, the overall incidence of alopecia is not that high, it's, it's quite low, but we did notice several trends. For example, many more females than males in our black six colonies exhibit hair loss. The number of mice uh, discarded for hair loss is much greater in those uh, for mice that are housed in pressurized, individually ventilated or PIV racks compared to those mice housed under convention conventional conditions. The other thing that we have noticed is that the in incidence of dermatitis varies seasonally, and most of the animals uh, develop dermatitis during the winter months compared to the summer months. Right. And in addition to that, um, dietary fat may also affect the incidence of alopecia. Um, so we used to feed our mice with the 11% fat chow, and we switched it to the 6% fat for most of the strains um, in April 1997. And we noticed that the incidence and the severity of alopecia in our C57 black 6J colonies decreased significantly. Right, right. So um, what is the treatment for dermatitis? Yeah, um, overall, there is no effective treatment of dermatitis. People usually trim the toe nails to prevent them stretching the woods. Um, topical treatment for affected animals are temporary, preactive at best, so not that effective. Um, we highly encourage you to consult with your facility veterinarian to determine the appropriate treatment for animals with dermatitis. Right, thank you for that. That is, that is very useful. We cannot stress enough uh, the fact that you need to pull in your veterinary staff for, for them to have an opinion on not only what to do, but what does your facility allow or doesn't allow to do. Um, Yitong, I wanted to move on to a different topic. I wanted to move on to another common condition in black six mice, which is malocclusion. And for those viewers that are not familiar, uh, this is a common disorder of many strains of laboratory mice, and it is uh, diagnosed simply by oral examination. Malocclusion occurs in mice when the incisors grow because their jaw is misaligned. And so the mandibular and maxillary teeth 
do not properly occlude. The best way to detect malocclusion is just to simply examine the mouse, uh, the, the mice's mouth. So, Yiton, can you comment on what we do at JAX when we see uh, this particular problem? Yeah, um, generally JAX does not breed any mice with mild occlusion, and technicians are trained um, to sh not ship out mice um, that have mild occlusion. And if it's a very valuable strain for internal studies, we may treat those mice by trimming their incisor teeth, and this is a lifelong treatment. So if you have mice um, that is very valuable for your study and that mice has mild occlusion and you still want to use it, you may need to trim their um, incisor teeth, and uh, this is a lifelong treatment. Excellent, excellent. I do see some uh, questions that came in from Alexandra, from San Francisco, from Elizabeth, from Omar. I will uh, save some of these questions uh, uh, for uh, for a little bit. Be but uh, before that, before I, I get to those questions, I wanted to talk about the third topic that um, we need, wanted to address today, which is hydrocephalus. That's a condition when which uh, body fluid, uh, which fluid, sorry, the fluid builds up in the ventricles of the brain and does not distribute normally between the brain and the spinal cord. Can you tell us a little bit more about the clinical signs? How, how can you detect these mice? Right. Um, so if young animals develop um, hydrocephalus, the clinical signs are really apparent. So you can see that those mice have a large rounded head, like a dome shape, and a shorted muzzle. And they are smaller than their little mates, and with time they could develop lethargy and neurological abnormalities. But if um, adult animal develop uh, hydrocephalus, they may not exhibit that domed shape, and the only finding may be the enlargement of the lateral ventricles found at necropsy or histopathology. Um, since there is no effective treatment for hydrocephalus in mice, and it's pretty painful, so whenever you see it, um, let your facility vet be involved as soon as possible. Um, they will give you guidelines on how to handle those mice. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that. So I think um, at this point, I'm gonna switch over and look at some of the comments from our viewers and try to address some of those. Um, Elizabeth is asking, has anyone identified a gene uh, on black six or, or a black six allele that underlies alopecia? Um, there are some mouse models for alopecia uh, where the genes, uh, some, some genes have been detected, but, but really um, it, it is uh, multi, uh, multifactorial as well. I, I know that the best mouse model for alopecia uh, that I am aware of is a C, the inbred strain C3H. And um, you can go to our website and, or contact technical support if you want more information. However, it does not uh, develop in 100% of the mice, and you have to wait until the mice are pretty old in order for them to develop uh, substantial alopecia. So I encourage you to write to micetech at jax.org and post that question so we can give you the stock number, I don't have it handy, of um, the C3H strain that is, I think, uh, to this date, the best model for uh, alopecia without it being a mutant or a transgenic mouse. We have um, another question that is asking about the enviro environmental factors affecting the alopecia status. It's a question from Xingtong. Do you wanna comment on, on that, Yitong? What um, do, do we know? Um, what in the environment can make alopecia worse? Yeah, um, so as I mentioned before, that um, so generally we would think that there was uh, some kind of stressors in the environment that would cause alopecia. Um, so like um, vibration, um, noise, um, and also um, we did like the study that looked at risk factors and we found out that sex, season, um, humidity, cage type, and diet are likely involved. So there are many environmental factors that could uh, uh, affect alopecia status. Excellent, excellent. Um, we have another question from Colleen and um, she, she didn't catch what was the percent of fat 
that is better to um, sort of prevent dermatitis. And what we mentioned is that in a study that we did back in 1997, we changed the feed from 11% fat chow that we used to give to our seafood stem black six colony, we uh, changed the diet to a 6% fat, which is what we give uh, most of our mice today is only 6% fat. And we did see um, um, the, the incidence of and severity of alopecia went, um, went down considerably. So that's something to keep in mind to check on what diet uh, you're giving to these mice and um, Give it a give it a try. A lot of these solutions is kind of trial and error, and what what works for you uh, best, and what works for your strain and your facility best. Um, another question that we have, Yi Tong, is what is the incidence of malocclusion that we see in our colony? Yeah, right. Um, so for the malocclusion um, and for um, C57 black 6 J mice, we see like around 0.05% um, in our um, black 6 colony. And uh, what about the incidence of hydrocephalus? Mm -hmm. The hydrocephalus for black 6 J mice is about around 0.02%. Um, awesome. So it's not that high. Right. Um, so, th so there would be like, uh, so this is something that we see in our colony. So you can set that as like a references. If you see something higher than that, this percentage, um, definitely consult with your facility vet to see what may be the cause, like those environmental factors could play a role. Perfect. I think we have time for one last question. This question is coming from Kelsey. And the question is, she, she's from, um, College Station, Texas, and she's asking to treat uh, for malocclusion, do you have to recheck uh, periodically to retrim the teeth or is it just whenever the mouse needs trimming again? Yeah, so uh, for the mice that we have for internal studies, if they have malocclusion and we keep them for this uh, study, we trim the incisor teeth. Um, so usually we will um, do like uh, trim them, like check them once a week to see whether these teeth they could still um, eat and drink. So if it's difficult for them to eat and drink, then we will trim it. Perfect, perfect. So basically, you keep an eye on them weekly, and then you decide if you have to retrim or not. Yes, correct. Excellent, excellent. Yitong, I wanted to ask um, if you could comment on the two links that we uh, put uh, for, for this particular mouse tech talk. It's two resources that uh, we posted. Can you comment quickly what, what are those blog posts? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the first one we put uh, is a blog about alopecia and dermatitis. Um, the second one about myeloclusion in research mice. So we have many references and pictures um, in those two blogs. And in the second blog uh, of that myeloclusion blog, we also collect um, the incidence of myeloclusion in many common inbred strains. Um, so if you want to learn more about those um, definitely take a look at those two blogs. And if you have any other questions, um, just call us or email us at mystech at jacks.org and we are happy to answer any questions you have. Perfect, perfect. Well, our next MyStech talk is called Let's Talk Strain Donation next Tuesday, September 29th. And we look forward to seeing you all on LinkedIn and YouTube. This is Dr. Dolores saying stay healthy, stay safe, and stay excited about your research. See you next time. Bye. Bye.